one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is an Xbox 360. As you can see, released in 2005. Um, it's 2016, so I was around 11, I was 11 years old. I was 11 years old when this was released. No, no shit, I was, I was nine. 11 years, yeah, I was nine years old when this was released. Now I'm 20 and going to my third year of university. Um, back during this generation when these were released, um, lots of kids in Canada um, had an Xbox rather than a PlayStation 3. And the, the main appeal of the Xbox 360, uh, mainly here in the North America, it was like kind of action games that were really shootery. And then being a nine-year-old nine growing up with like pretty strict parents, they were just like, no, you can't have Reddit M games because you're nine years old. I missed out on lots of like Gears of War and Halo. And um, so I got a PS3 instead, which is okay. And I still think that the PS3 is an incredible system in its own right. But that said, many a times were spent uh, going to, you know, my neighbor's house. Now, my neighbor had, in particular, like, he had lots of the popular 360 games. Like, he rolled with a 360, and so that's where I got lots of my exposure there. Um, I remember back in elementary school when the Xbox 360 Elite model came out. Probably around, God, when did it come out? Maybe around 2006, 2007? And so... What happened there was that this was like an elite model. I'm holding it upside down. It was an elite model that came in all black as opposed to the all white. And uh, it was the business. It had a 120 gigabyte hard drive. And that was pretty insane. Thing is, it retailed for around $400 when it came out. And now I got my, co I got my console for around 60 bucks on a Facebook ad. And uh, Facebook wasn't even a thing back then either. So I got this, and this is an and this is an elite model. This is the original fat version, which I think is actually really beautiful because I didn't really know how these actually kind of worked. Like there's <laughs> there's memory card slots in this. Like this is like the last kind of like the last bastion of memory card units, and then the rise of downloadable content happened this generation. So that thing is is that you know that's pretty antiquated. You know, like you know, hard drives are actually the way that the way that this went and memory cards kind of went the way of the dodo now it's interesting because i had no idea how these uh hard drives are actually kind of attached they're attached through going like this this is actually really heavy um you kind of go from the top or from the back rather and then you just push it in through the front now when i got this i thought i was like trying to remove it from this but you can't you actually have to push down the button here and push it all like upwards this way so like opposite leverage i damn near broke the thing because i'm just like what the hell what do you do but no that's how it works so it's kind of it's kind of fun like kind of figuring um things out again because i had the ps3 all figured out um i had i had the slim model which is what my family has now then i have my uh super slim model but i've never actually like got to see up close oops um an original model now this model actually doesn't have its door intact which is fine you know makes sense because it's like you know it's old i've never actually removed the faceplate off this thing but you can this is one this is one of the models that you could remove the faceplates off of but i don't really want to mess with that i do really like like the button design it's like it doesn't really quite click but it's just kind of it's all glossy when the rest of it's kind of this matte finish now what's interesting and that I found out is that you can see 360 console it has its composite cable or its component cable kind of outputs here and that is an HDMI cable um, this doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi uh, which is kind of a bummer because now everything has Wi-Fi but back in 2005 wired systems where people would wire all across the house you know out and about like just going through walls and shit like it sucks right so you know, but that was the norm back in 2005 when this came out. And now since then, you know, models have it built in, which makes sense, right? Like the 360S and the 360E model. But the thing is, is that it has a USB in the back and then it has an Ethernet kind of port there, right? And um, you can hardwire it in and then you could, it has these, has these attachments that you kind of hook the wireless kind of thing on. Now I brought something from back home, like an old, 
like late nineties Microsoft kind of wireless receiver that I plugged into like a compact PC that we had downstairs. And, uh, you know, that works, but not for this. I thought uh, maybe mid, like mid to late nineties wireless tech might work if it's Microsoft branded in a Microsoft machine for 2005, made it work, I plug it in, lights turn on and then immediately turn off. So that doesn't quite work. So the one thing that I had to do is actually plug in an ethernet cable into my laptop and then use my laptop's Wi-Fi uh, or my laptop wirelessly to a router to get it to connect to the internet just to update games since I, I don't really have an Xbox Live account because I don't really need one because I mostly play on the PlayStation and most of my purchases, my hundreds and hundreds of dollars are invested in that uh, you know ecosystem. But that said, it was good to kind of update all the titles that I got. Now, speaking of titles, oh, right, to finish off the back here, there's this kind of this AV out, which has components, or you could have like your component cables or your composite cables way back, and then an HDMI. Now, fortunately, I remember going to the neighbor's house, and uh, he had composite cables, but a huge, huge high definition television with no HDMI cables. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's just like, well, I don't really notice the difference. And I'm like, oh, brother. And he was. This is all the way back in 2011. This is back in 2011 when there was. When Skyrim came out, so I brought my HDMI cable over, and I plugged it in, and I was just like, "Look at this shit!" And you know, you could read the HUD on Skyrim just fine. And, you, and I was like, "Look at the extra detail on all those in-game items, those in-game coins." And then since it's a Bethesda open-world RPG, it's not really the best showcase of individual assets being highly detailed. But that said, he she just his mind was blown. It's absolutely incredible that he waited that long for an HDMI cable, but they were kind of expensive back in 2011, at least in our small town. You can only get like a six feet cable for like 20 bucks or totally getting ripped off. Ah, well. Anyways, I have an HDMI cable that it came with, which is fortunate. It plugs into the back here. Um, what's interesting is that I actually got a surround sound system for the first time in my life, like an actual surround sound. And I was like, oh, I had to get the optical in, like those thin fiber optic cables. There's no input for that. There's no digital out. There's no optical out for this. And so what I had to do is I had to go onto eBay and get, like, I plug in the HDMI on the bottom, and then I had to get a separate plug-in that has kind of the, the red and yellow kind of, like, RCA jacks. So if you want two stereo, like, channels, if you want to go put that into your custom system, but also it has an, um, a digital out, or an optical out, rather, and it plugged into this receptacle as well. So, like, I use both receptacles, one for audio and then one for video. And that's how you get, you know, uh, optical out for the original mo uh, for the original 360 model. On the X on the 360s, it has it built in, as most systems did, um, even on P uh, the PlayStation 3. But the thing is, is that the Xbox 360e, like the one that looks kind of closer with like the two tone, like the Xbox One does, it doesn't have an optical out. Which you know, most people are kind of like, oh. Whatever, you know, most of the audio going from the HDMI would be just fine, right? My, my HDMI audio on my television is sucks. It just is terrible because I have a big screen TV, but it's cheap as hell. So, like, the audio doesn't sound that good. But, you know, I didn't really want to sacrifice that. Especially if I'm playing new exclusive games for the first time. Now, that's that. Let's take a look at... The games, the exclusives that I got. So since I did most of my multi-platform gaming last generation during high school on my PlayStation 3, and I played most of the exclusives there, I'm really looking for like exclusive exclusives, right? Um, so and so I'm looking for exclusive exclusives. So like think of this Gears of War trilogy that I kind of bought, um, and it's super cheap now too. They're like five bucks each now. You know, hindsight's 2020. 20, I got Gears One, Gears Two from EB. And then Gears 3. And they're all in these recycled packages. They're all 5 bucks each. I'm like, oh, I, I could only find these here. And then I go to the pawn shop next week and I find them with the actual covers. These are, you know, the discs are in bad shape, of course. But, like, the cases are just got awful. Ugh, but I wasn't willing to pay another 5 bucks for another copy of a game that I haven't really played yet. Because I'm playing through one. And one is absolutely... It's, it's like, it's... I understand why people were like, complaining about the dull and gray 
third person bro shooters from last gen because like i didn't really play this and i was like oh it's not a big deal i don't really play i'm playing uncharted and i'm playing little big planet I'm playing ratchet and clank the ps3 trilogy and i'm like oh those are colorful i don't know what you're talking about brown and gray dude bro shooters this is a brown gray dude bro shooter it's awesome it's incredible but it's really really bland visually but i really like the character designs i've always like thought you know when you're, you know, in your preteens, I'm just like, oh yeah, Marcus Phoenix, oh hell yeah, you know, like that John De uh, DiMaggio kind of just that beautiful, beautiful voice. Thing is, is that like I haven't played two and three yet. I played the multiplayer of both of them. Like I just wanted to test that the discs work, right? Uh, but um, and it works and it's good. And I can tell like three is really colorful or actually introduces some color. It looks amazing. The Unreal Engine three is actually at work, but. Those are exclusive third-person shooters that I've always wanted to play, but I never had a 364. You know, next up is Forza Motorsport 3. Now, the story behind me getting this game from a Castanet ad here in Kelowna um, is a whole other video. You know, it leads me to talking about, like, university stuff. But, you know, I tried some of 3. Not really a big fan of it. Um, I wish I had my other copy of 4 here because I have a full game copy of 4. Um, it was really disappointing um, to see that Forza 4 came in like a holiday pack edition. And what the thing is, is that like that was what was packed into a holiday bundle around when this come out. I was a Gran Turismo kid when the PS3 and the PS2 was out. I remember having Gran Turismo 4 for the PlayStation 2 and Gran Turismo 5 for the PlayStation 3. I skipped 6 because the PS4 had come out by then and I was just like, oh... I'm going to wait for a multi-platform release and that never came about because Drive Club was going to come out and then Drive Club was, you know, delayed for a year and it was all ugly. And meanwhile, I remember back in high school, um, my friends were all getting into Forza. My friend Tyler actually bought a 360 just for this game so he could have like a steering wheel kit. And he remembers drifting down, you know, and some Japanese import tuners like drifting down the kind of the, the cliff tracks in this game. Now, I heard that the audio for this game is really good because Grand Turismo 5 for sure kind of has, it's kind of hinky, it's kind of it's kind of lackluster. But from what I've played of this one, it's pretty good. It's actually kind of interesting. I really prefer kind of like, I feel like there's a better career progression in Grand Turismo, in Gran Turismo. But the thing is, is that maybe I'm just biased. But the progression here, like, I don't feel, like, too much growth. It's probably because I could see too many cool cars right away. Which, I mean, for kind of the 360 audience that, like, this game bundled with, it's for, like, turn 10 kind of focuses on, like, the beauty of these cars. But, like, kind of, like, and you're, they're more in your face about it. As far as I'm concerned, Gran Turismo is just, like, there's beauty in cars. But you're going to have to work for it to get that. Just like you're playing a game. Now next okay so portal thir portal 2 was pretty amazing um i remember getting it in 2010 but i've never actually played 2010 or 2011 or 2012 oh my god I'm trying to remember between 2011 and 2012 when that came out so but i never played portal 1 now you know i played first slice on the pc but I've never actually played it like kind of on consoles. And I would prefer to get an orange box. Um, prefer to get an orange box kind of on PS3. But apparently it runs bad and it's actually really rare. And I'm like, even though it runs bad, I'm still kind of interested in having it because I'd have it for PS3 because it's rare. And I'm like, oh, that's cool, right? It's kind of like how I have Valkyria Chronicles. But I guess that's kind of like the, the collector's mindset. So instead, I actually found a copy of the orange box on Castnet locally too. Um, so it has Half-Life 1, 2, no, not 1, Episode 1, Episode 2, and the base game as well. Um, and I'm halfway through number 2, Episode 2, um, on PC. But my PC's a piece of garbage, so it's actually struggling to run Episode 2 uh, that much because of the bigger levels and all. Um, so I'm actually curious to go through this, earn some achievements. Um, this also includes Team Fortress 2, but by the time that this was released back in 2007, Team Fortress 2 in 2016 is completely different with hats competitive matchmaking crazy bullshit like bots uh man versus machine all sorts of updates this is the base game and so it's actually kind of interesting to see kind of how it 
how it changed. But I really, 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 like, just, I remember being totally enamored when this came out when I was way too young to play these and I wasn't allowed to get them. I was like, oh my god, it looks so good. And, you know, now I see why. Because it's so, it's it's great. Like, I remember playing, I Portal was the first game I beat on my 360 here that I just got. It's very, it's a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. Um, I heard that, yeah, it was three hours. But I finished in, like, two hours and 50 minutes, like, just under three hours. Because I had already know the portal, the portal rule set, and so I know how to, I knew how to kind of figure out those puddle, puzzles. And then playing the first one, in comparison to number two, number two was such an improvement. Like number two is a masterpiece. Like I want to go back every single year and play it again. I haven't actually beat the campaign through to through um, since the last update came out, probably in late 2012, uh, with the multiplayer maps. I beat like every single one of those maps, and it's. It's really, really good. This is an incredible package. I only got it for five bucks as well. It's awesome. Next is one of my favorite games ever, my favorite shooters ever. Left 4 Dead. I remember playing this uh, in my next door neighbor's house. And um, it was awesome, awesome, awesome because as the split screen, you're facing against zombies. He was a lot better than me, or he killed a lot more zombies. And I was like, oh, and then now that I play this now, like I get the flow, I get everything. It's really, really good to have this. I would have got Left 4 Dead 2, but I actually, only, I actually already own it on PC. And just for nostalgia factor, I really want to get Left 4 Dead 1. Um, it's pretty incredible, even in single player or in split screen. I'm not really playing this with Xbox Live, which is a shame, but not a lot of people are playing this on 360 anyways. That's what I figure. But I really wanted it just for nostalgia value. And this never came on. This never came out for the PS3, so I'd like to have it as well. Alan Wake, I got an excellent copy from EB Games. I got, like, it's in it's in pretty good shape. I'm actually really, really happy. I heard so much about this game. I played the very beginning of it. It's really, it's really, really strange. I'm actually kind of stuck in it so far, but I'll get back to it. Um, it's really, really creepy, but it's awesome. It's real. I really, 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 I, it's kind of campy. Maybe it just hasn't aged that well in terms of, like, the dialogue and the cutscenes. But the dynamic lighting in a 360 game of this generation is pretty incredible. I actually really, really thoroughly enjoy it. Next is Bully. Now, I bought the digital copy of uh, the PS2 version on my PlayStation 3. Now, the problem is that it's kind of like, it's not really the best. I remember I remember uh, the Scholarship Edition on Wii, and I never played that one. But I remember that Wii came out, and then the Scholarship Edition came out for 360, and it just looked better. And so, I, I hear it's, you know, not underrated, but, like, it's rated, it's good. It's a rock star, um, it's a rock star, you know, open world, you know, action game. But you're a piece of shit kid who can kiss girls. That's pretty lit. Okay, I got Fable 2 because I just dabbled in Fable 1 and I liked this, because I heard 2 was the best. And I, I played a little bit of 1 on my original Xbox, but the problem is that I didn't really want to go too far in it because I heard 2 was an improvement and it's really, really good. But I heard 3 was trash, so I didn't pick up 3. Dead Rising. Now, Dead Rising look, seems like it has a ton of stuff in it. Oh yeah, I had a copy of NHL 14 that came inside the Xbox when I got it so I don't have a case for it but that said Dead Rising it's kind of interesting because you know oh look you kill so many so many zombies but what's weird is that with its really really bizarre Japanese game design it's actually kind of meant to have multiple playthroughs because apparently it's pretty short and you're supposed to make these choices where some stuff is locked out like you save one person it might trigger this side quest and then at the same time another person needs help it's all timed I'm not really too sure if I like the time stuff. Like, it kind of gives me a little bit of anxiety. I'm just like, oh, but some people say that it's needed to give an urgency to this game. That's pretty unique to this game. Because if you were to take it out, it's like what's really... It, it would get boring really quick. Like, it needs that edge. And so, apparently that time kind of gives it, but I'm not really too hot with it. But that said, apparently it's really, really, really good. And I have yet to really start it. I just I've tested all these games to see if they have actually work. And they do. But I haven't really invested a lot of time into the campaigns of particularly this one. Now, Dirt 2 is normally a game that I would get on the PlayStation 3. But it didn't have trophies. This is before it has trophies. So I might as well get it on 360. And this came with the Xbox. So fuck it. Um, what's really, really cool 
about Dirt 2. I remember playing the demo for this when I was way too poor back when I was a little tiny kid um, back in 2008 when this came out. Um, I played the demo for this on PlayStation 3 so much and I remember being absolutely enamored. Uh, Codemasters graphics engine looks gorgeous. I mean it's not the most photorealistic thing but like that has a style to it, right? I really like the graffiti style. It seems youthful and with the kids. Now, I don't know about you. Oh shit, the card's full. Wow.